So there's two things that you never do at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Now, if you were a betting man, what would you think those two things would be that you never do at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier? I'd never actually heard about the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, but I'd heard of Arlington. I often get emotional when I talk about it because it was just, it was something I'd never seen before in my life, especially not back on the farm. I'd always told my family that I would never join the military unless we were attacked. And when 9-11 happened, it struck really close to home. I ended up going to the recruiters that day. Couple things, if you've never been to Arlington, you should go. It's hard to imagine how big the place is until you've seen it. And the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier looks like some tough duty for several reasons. How many of you guys joined up because of 9-11? Put that in the comments. I then shipped out to Fort Benning, Georgia. I barely had my uniforms issued to me and a sergeant walked in and he was recruiting from all the infantry guys there to go to Arlington. This is what I'd asked my recruiter for, was to go to Arlington and to not accept this offer. This is, it was like coming home. I was hoping, well, maybe I'll just get assigned to the tomb. Little did I know <laughs> that that's not how it works. Now I know several jarheads that want to go on embassy duty. You think about it and you go, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna be sitting in Barcelona, all the hotties, all the work to get there, all the work to get prepared, to look good, to do the job right. It's the part about these ceremonial jobs. It looks like they would be really tough to make sure you hit the standard. I was assigned to casket bearers because I was a bigger, stocky farm boy. And then I had to train for about two months um, lifting weights, lifting heavy rock-filled caskets, and practicing flag folding. And think about it, you can't have an off day. You can't scratch. You can't be hung over. When you're a casket bearer, you gotta be on all the time. There can't be any mistakes. Cause all that family members is the funeral for their loved one. Practice flag folding eight hours a day. Because even if we've practiced 1,000 times, the family that we were folding the flag right next to, that's the only time that they were gonna get their flag folded and handed off to them. So while we're holding the flag, you've got the rifle team, caisson platoon, and then the marching element. And each soldier has practiced and trained to perfection. And I was really overcome with the responsibility. I've heard you folks that have been in the military can appreciate the amount of training that goes in to do something as simple as an inspection in boot camp, all the practice and training. I can't imagine how much goes into this, getting ready. Just the number of days on and of standing, folding flags, uniform inspections, having to stay just so, so uniform looks perfect all the time. It would strike me as a very tough job for most young enlisted guys. Of burying the fallen. And it was very humbling to be there because we actually got to see the price. So after about 13 months as a casket bearer um, and over 300 burials, my platoon sergeant approached me and he said that he thought that I had what it takes to actually go to the tomb of the unknown soldier. This position in the military is interesting because most positions, once you've earned, say, a ribbon or an award, you retain it. In a tomb guard, you go out, screw up. They can yank that from you. Very ceremonious job, well-respected job. If you guys have ever known any tomb guards, let me know. After being assigned to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, I met my mentor and proud to say friend, Staff Sergeant Adam Dickmeyer. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please? I am Corporal Dickmeyer of the 3rd Infantry Regiment, United States Army. Sergeant Dickmeyer was a hard charger. <laughs> a lot of us in the infantry um, usually were and he drove our squad to perfection. You'd have to be a hard charger to want to take this job on. The amount of inspections, the amount of eyeballs on you all the time. There is no forgiveness for losing your military bearing, scratching, looking unsat in your uniform. And he did it by example. The tomb guard guards on the mat going back and forth every 21 steps, 21 seconds. So Weapons always on the other side of the tomb, placing the weapon soldier tomb. Kind of our way to show that we're protecting the tomb. Little history here, the 24 hour century started 1948. Before that, it wasn't a 24 hour position. Since then, 24 hours, 
365, rain or shine. And if you've been to D.C., you know how hot it can get, how cold it can get, muggy, buggy. Looks like a job that'll really test your military bearing. Constantly looking for anybody that would dishonor, disgrace, or disrespect the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and the fallen, the unknowns that it represents. When somebody disrespects or dishonors the tomb, we'll break them off. Remain behind the chains and rail. It is requested that all visitors remain behind the chains and rail at all times. It's very clear when you're there where not to go. People get so excited with their phones, they want to take a picture, they're not paying attention. I've never seen this in real life, but you see a lot of these people just wandering around, not paying any attention, trying to get it that Instagram shot, right? Usually, it doesn't take that long for them to realize they should turn around. So there's two things that you never do at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. One... What would you think those two things would be? I had a few in my mind, but I wasn't exactly on. I actually had about 10 in my mind. Stand by. ...is drop a rifle. Another very the cardinal sin is being sent down. That's when you fail an inspection. Oh. And for 18 months while I was at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, no one that I know ever failed an inspection, except for me one day. Ouch, I can't imagine as a young enlisted guy having that ceremonious, that important of a job, and then failing in the inspection. You'd have to say, what did I do wrong? You can imagine the weapons cleaning part of this would be tough. Very human, DC. A little bit of rust can get on something very quickly. You got white gloves, you're trying to keep them from getting nasty, so I'm sure they don't put a lot of lubricant on the outside of the weapon. This would be tough. When it rains, the weapons, they're highly polished steel. They can, they can rust instantly. It's very humid. And uh, I walked out of the tomb quarters with a dirty weapon. Staff Sergeant Adam Dickmeyer came right up. I passed off the weapon. He only did one swipe and looked at his glove and it was dirty. And um, I started to hear him breathing, extremely heavy. So um, he slapped the weapon back in my hands. I put it back to order arms. And then he whispered under his breath, as protocol says, that weapon is dirty. Go down and get a clean one. I made one of the cardinal sins, got sent back from the inspection block. Ouch, that must have been a tough time. You can imagine what's running through your head. Young, enlisted guy, you want to do the right thing. You think you did. Somebody looks in your weapon and finds it to be dirty. Most people would say, what's the big deal? Let it slide, right? Who cares? Nobody's going to know. You can appreciate what these guys go through. They take this job serious for all the right reasons. I was at the bottom. I thought I was going to be released. Adam ended up helping me through some of the most difficult times of my training, and thankfully I was able to pass with his help. Staff Sergeant Adam Dickmeyer, he would go on to lead a platoon in combat in Afghanistan. A lot of people don't realize that's not the primary MOS of these tomb guards. All of them are in the infantry. All of them do a stent. I don't know how long it is. Looks like a couple years potentially at the tomb. Then go back to their unit. Now that must be a tough transition. And a friend called me who I hadn't heard from for quite a while. And he let me know that Adam Dickmeyer was killed in Afghanistan. Wow. There's going to be like a reunion, all descending back into Arlington National Cemetery, but it wasn't a happy reunion. There's no joking. There's no, there was no joy. We're there burying a tomb guard. Now that seems like it would be tough. You serve with the guy, you go get out, go on your way, hear back about a man you serve with gets deployed. Now his funeral is going to be at Arlington, where you served, where you did hundreds of funerals, where you were a tomb guard. Now, all of a sudden, a man he looked up to is buried there. I can't imagine the mix of emotions this man must have had and all the people who served under him. Our friend. I think what the tomb now represents is for soldiers everywhere. They'll go to the tomb to remember the fallen. And we're just making sure that the fallen know that they've got a buddy that's there with them 24 hours a day. How many of you five viewers have been to Arlington? into the Vietnam wall, the tomb, 
into a funeral there. No matter where you sit on the political spectrum, seeing the events that go on in Arlington will give a lump in your throat. Doesn't go away too easy.